Reading Pioneer's Debate presents Argument Building, How to Structure an Argument for a Debate. We'll begin with the joke of the day. The joke is, what is a pirate's favorite letter of the alphabet? Any ideas? Okay, here's a hint. If you're waiting for the answer, just wait a little bit longer. Because we're going to talk about the argument structure. An argument has three parts. An assertion, a reason, and an evidence. When those three are put together, A-R-E becomes R. Get it? That's the answer to the joke of the day. The pirate's favorite letter is R. That was funny, right? Well, we're going to now begin with the A, assertion part of how to make an argument. The definition of an assertion is a claim or statement that needs to be proven or explained. Basically, it's the idea that you want to try to make when creating an argument to support or oppose the current resolution. Let's go to the drawing board and try to make an assertion. Our resolution today is attending academies is good for children. Now if we're thinking for the pro side, we should try to create an argument that describes how academies are good for children. The assertion that we have today is children enjoy learning at academies. This is a good assertion because it supports the resolution. It is a statement that can be supported with reasoning, and there can be evidence found to also support this argument. So let's move on to the next part, the reasoning, and see if we can give strong reasoning to this assertion that we've made. The definition of reason is the act of proving an assertion by explaining, describing, and elaborating. Basically, you're just trying to show that the argument you make has logic in it. The reason why should be explained very simply and clearly. Let's go back to the drawing board with the resolution, attending academies is good for children. Now, if you remember, our assertion was that children enjoy learning in academies. Now we need to make a reason for this. We need to answer the why. Why do children enjoy learning at academies? So, we have a reason. Academies have a positive effect on their education. This reasoning supports the assertion and explains why children enjoy going to academies. The final part of an argument is to have the correct evidence. The definition for evidence are facts, information, or observations presented in support of an assertion. While there are different types of evidence, an example is listed below. Studies show that playing video games causes children to become more violent in personality. This evidence is missing some key parts that more advanced debaters will include in their arguments. This includes having an author, who did the studies, and the date, when were the studies conducted. These two pieces of information are very important when providing statistics, facts, or information relevant to the topic. But now, let's use this knowledge of evidence to the argument that we are creating Now let's go back to the drawing board with our resolution, attending academies is good for children. When we find evidence, we need to make sure that it supports the assertion and the reasoning. So after doing much research, the evidence that I found was this. A study 
from Seoul National University in 2007 said that 69% of children were satisfied with their private school classes. Additionally, 73.9% of children also thought that academies had a positive effect on their public school grades and abilities. As you can see, this evidence supports the assertion that children enjoy learning in their academies. It has an author, the Seoul National University, and a date, 2007, of when it was published. So let's put these together. Our first argument for the pro side reads as this. Children enjoy learning at academies. Academies have a positive effect on their education. A study from Seoul National University in 2007 said that 69% of children were satisfied with their private school classes. Additionally, 73.9% of children also thought that academies had a positive effect on their public school grades and abilities. Now, can you think of what a second argument could be? Go ahead and try to make another argument for the pro side that follows the A-R-E structure. When you're done, come back and we'll finish the lesson because there's one more thing I want to teach you before we're done. After you understand the structure of an argument with A-R-E, there's one more thing that you should probably use when constructing your arguments for competition and for class. That is the impact. So what is an impact? At the end of the argument, you should explain why that argument is important in the debate. We all know that you should choose strong arguments, but if you can't explain why that argument is strong, or why that argument is important in the debate you're having, then the argument cannot really be used as a good way to show why you're the best team. The impact helps you explain the importance and the why your argument was used and should be considered at the end of the debate for why your team should win. Back at the drawing board with the same resolution, attending academies is good for children, we should add the impact at the end of the argument. So, my argument is blah 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 blah. This means that academies are not only helpful for students to prepare for their future, but also is fun for them to be in. With this example, you're now putting a picture in the mind of the judge of how the academies can help students prepare for their future. It's fun, it helps them learn, and it gives more meaning to the argument that you've presented. So, with the impact, you now know all the parts of how to make a strong argument. When making an impact, there are a couple of tips that you should be considering. First, you want to make sure that you use eye contact. You want to know if the judge is listening and understanding what you're saying. If the judge is not, you may want to change the way you word the impact of your argument. The second tip is to make it simple. You don't want to have a long, lengthy impact that doesn't make sense or doesn't outline the key part of your argument. If it is too long, it probably doesn't help the argument at all. The final tip is try to make the impact important to the judge. The judge is the one who will decide who wins and who loses, so you want to make sure that the impact relates to the judge and can get the judge to vote for your side. Well, now's the conclusion. We talked about how to build an argument. An argument has not three, but four main parts. You should try to have direct assertions, strong logic and reasoning, evidence that is supportive, and you should explain the importance of your argument. With these four parts, you now can make your own arguments, 
and show how they are important. Well, there you have it. Thank you everyone for watching this video on argument building. I hope you learned something and are able to use these skills moving forward during your debate career. If you enjoyed this video, please rate, comment, and subscribe below to keep up to date with all future debate-related videos. The video on the left is related to our other channel, which has a one versus one debate, including the full pro and con speech. The videos on the right are also meant to help improve your debate skills by building introductions and actual speeches. So, thank you again from Reading Pioneers Debate. I hope you enjoyed this video, and of course, have a wonderful day.